guys. My name is Rebecca. Uh, I'm for anybody that does not know me. Um, I'm here to talk to you guys about Reiki and pretty much the benefits of it and what I do as a practitioner because I um, am a Reiki Grandmaster. So as I go through it, I'm going to go over um, the benefits of Reiki, what it is, um, some of the different levels of Reiki as well. Um, and then I like to go over chakras and explain what they are, and if I can get into them depending on the time frame, um, I'll be able to explain, and I brought a little closer with me so you'll be able to see um, how they correlate with everything that we do um, in the holistic wellness field. So, a little bit about myself. Um, I am the owner of Mending Zenful Minds, LLC. I am a, like I said, a Reiki Grandmaster. I teach people all the different levels of it. Um, I also um, do meditations, I do sound baths, I do teach CPR, and um, do like gut, some gut health with like ionic foot baths and stuff. So you can always grab a card that I have behind me if you want to get more information um, of what I do and the services that I provide. So. Getting into Reiki in general, uh, Reiki stands for the universal life force energy that everybody has. Um, basically what I tell people as we go through each level of Reiki, you get attuned to um, specific symbols, but also certain levels. So as you get up in levels, um, like I said, when I go through them, you'll be able to see you know, the difference in what it does for you um, as a person. And on your mental state, your emotional state, and like your physical body as well. Um, <clears throat> so a little history about it is Reiki came about and what they consider revived um, in the middle <coughs> of the 19th century. And that was by a Christian monk um, named, uh, by the name of uh, Mikhail Yasui. So, there are a whole bunch of different lineages when it comes down to Reiki. So most people only know about the first three levels, so they're the ones that I'm gonna speak the most about. Um, I'm gonna touch on the other ones, because like I said, I am a 10th level. Um, but there are different lineages, but at the end of the day, they all stem from them first three. So like that's the base of everything. Like I said, that started um, from a Christian monk and um, he wound up traveling from Japan. He went to, uh, came here to the United States. Then he went to India, back to Japan, um, just to be able to, you know, find the healing power, basically, that Jesus had. And um, while being on, I always say the mountain wrong, but it's like Mount uh, Karami. When he was up there, he meditated for 21 days. And on the 21st day, he wound up having um, he was able to see different things and he wind up having a white, you know, a nice clean white light um, atom and it wind up hitting him in his third eye, which is up here. Once it hit him in his third eye, um, he was able to see all these different colors. So the colors of the rainbow, he was able to see all these gold symbols. So that's where the chakras come from. Um, like I said, I'll be speaking of it later, but that's where, you know, the chakras come from. Um, the energy sources and everything. So, with that, he was able to figure out that he was able to heal himself and others because when he came down from that mountain on the 21st day, he actually stubbed his toe on the way down. So when he was going down, he stubbed his toe, was bleeding, all that stuff. Well, he held it, his toe, his hand, you know, his feet in between it, his foot in between his hands and it eventually had the bleeding started to subside and stop and then he eventually got rid of the pain and healed himself as well. So that was the first miracle that he had from this. Then, um, you know, after fasting for 21 days, they always tell you don't eat big meals. Well, he was hungry, so when he went to the innkeeper, he ordered, you know, the biggest meal he could. He ate it and had no problems. So that was considered the second miracle. And then the third one, um, was the innkeeper's order had a toothache that was going on for days and just nothing was helping or nothing was relieving the swelling or the pain. Um, so he asked if he could place his hands on her and he was 
able to. And with that, almost immediately, the swelling started going down and the pain went away before he even left. Um, so they were some of the different things that did happen when it came to him realizing what he actually found and came to him. So he wound up going back, like I said, to Japan and just started spreading the word, word and you know teaching everybody about Reiki. So to get into the levels, the first level um, of Reiki, you get attuned to a symbol called Chokurei. Now with that specific symbol, that's the one that you know kind of gets you into your powers basically and it gets you started with being able to channel the different um, energy uh, that's coming from it. And also, uh, you, you learn how to do Reiki for yourself, <laughs> others. You can do Reiki on plants and animals. So in the first level, that's what you learn. Um, in the second level, you learn two other symbols. And the one is for distance healing, which is called um, the Hancho Deisho Zen. And then you also have the other one, which is the Zeihei Ki. That one is for like your mental and emotional health. So um, as I go through, you'll see everything played a part. Like if you're off mentally, emotionally, all that, you're gonna be off physically and people are gonna be able to see that. Um, you'll be able to see it and feel it as well. So Reiki, when you learn about it, you learn that there's no time. So there's no past, no present, and no future. Um, that like times now. So for example, I could have somebody here on my table and I could do a Reiki session. Or I could have somebody that's in the next room and they would still feel the full effect. Um, and you know, you can even be across the world and you'll still be able to feel the effect of Reiki. So it's something that you can do distantly too. You don't have to be in front of that specific person. Um, which is also a good thing. And like I said, the whole mental state, that's where it comes in with number two. That's, you know, where you really start figuring out how your mental and your emotions really start um, affecting your physical body. Um, so then the third one, like I said, which is where most people stop, that's the Reiki master level. This is where people are considered a teacher of Reiki. They get attuned to, attuned to all um, the symbols the one for the master is called uh, Deku Mayo, and that's the main power um, one. And like I said, most people at this level, that's when they'll go out and start their businesses and so on and so forth. You can stop there if you want to, or you can go up. Like I said, most people only know of three levels. Um, and some of the things, when I go over it, you'll see, you may have heard of them before and not really known that they, you know, my grandmaster had put it into a level for us basically so like i said there's a whole bunch of different lineages um it's just based off of who you get taught from and um you know which one you follow so with the fourth level the fourth level is the fire serpent level and with that one it's where you learn how to infuse um anything so if you work with crystals if you work with candles um no matter what it is that you work with food, water, like I infuse my water bottles and stuff with Reiki, that's the level where you learn all of that. Um, and you get attuned, I think it's like four other, it's like four or five um, symbols. There's a lot of them as you go past level three. Um, then the next one, five and six, they kind of go hand in hand. It's tapping, um, a lot of people know it as just tapping, EFT or TFT, depending on how you feel it. Um, one's emotional and the other one's thought. So basically in that, what is what happens there is you get taught, um, you know, in your face, your body, different spots where you can tap to be able to kind of rewire your brain. So like, for example, my sister's here, so I'm gonna put on glass real fast. She hates spiders. So if there was a spider, she'd be the first one, you know, jumping out the window or whatever, she wouldn't be here. So. With her, she would be perfect for the tapping where she would start on her head and she would say, I love spiders, you know, and, and you would change that fear and you would start saying positive things about it. I love spiders, spiders are my friend. And you hit certain spots of, you know, through it and that's what you learn in um, 
on five and six, which spots to hit. And then, you know, you pick what positive things you want to say, but you just get kind of a guideline of what to say. Um, so like I said, that's five and six. That one is really about rewiring um, your faults and emotions because there's a lot of stuff that we bring on from ancestral stuff that you might not even realize until you start doing this work. Um, so with doing tapping, you're able to kind of rewire all that. And that's why when people say about like breaking generational curses and stuff, like that's part of it because you're rewiring yourself to keep you from going down that same path basically. Um, so then you have uh, the seventh level and the seventh level is divination. So that's where you get really connected with your spirit guides. Um, most people know it as muscle testing. It's one of the main ones that they do for level seven. So for an example, if I had somebody here, um, I would want to use an arm that you know hasn't had any previous injury to it and I would just have them put their arm out. The way it works is, you know, when you start, you want to start by asking like yes questions. So if I ask a yes question and the answer is truly yes, I won't be able to push down that person's arm. It would give me resistance. Now, if that person was unsure of the answer or they were just lying about it, then their arm would move. Um, so that's one of the ways that, you know, people are able to get to the root of problems because you might consciously not feel something, but subconsciously you are. So that's how they can figure out the difference and work on it. Um, and then the other ways that a lot of people know of is anybody that uses tarot cards or pendulums or oracle cards, uh, spirit rods, bones, runes, whatever it is. Um, all of that is the same thing. Because again, you're connecting to your guides, you're connecting to your higher self to get the answers. Um, that you need, you just have different tools in front of you to do so. Um, so then you have the eighth level, um, the eighth level of, excuse me, Kazen warrior level, and that's the one where you're pretty much considered, um, it's like the level we call getting shit done, um, in layman's terms. It's, you really get on the ball and uh, of knowing, you know, what you need to do, what you need to focus on because of all the previous levels that you went through. So at this level, you really get focused on a plan. And then with that plan, then you start attacking it and everything else. So that's where that comes from because that's when you really start getting yourself in the gear. And, um, you know, like I said, seeing, seeing come to fruition what you've kind of been working on all the previous levels and even in your life in general. So then you have nine, which is the grand master level. Um, with the grand master level, that's where you learn as katana is one of the ones that you get um, attuned to, and that one's to be able to help build like security, um, to be able to build like your security, your protection, all that type of stuff. You really hone in on how to protect yourself um, when doing this, because a lot of people they don't realize how much goes into prepping for something like this when we do sessions or when we do, you know, connect in with the higher self. Um, it's not something where you just sit down and you grab your cards, <coughs> it. like you have certain things you have to do ahead of time. So this level is the level where you start learning and really getting into it. Like you learn it at the beginning, but this is when you really get into it because you're getting into a higher self um, and you're going to need it. So then the last one is the Grandmaster level, which is where I'm at. Um, and that is called the Magnus level. And that's basically like that you learn in there is all of like manifesting. And that's where pretty much it all comes from. And it's manifesting everything you want out of life for you, your family, your kids, you know, whatever the case is. Um, and then, you know, with that, as you get a tone to each one, you can go back and teach them to other people. And when I said it, when I say it tuned, that's just um, a Reiki master has to do a ceremony. So it's just a ceremony where you um, 
get the symbols, you know, drawn over your hands, drawn over your back and your body to where you get attuned to it. Once you get attuned to it, you're always attuned to it. So it's, you know, like say I do it now, but then I stop for five or 10 years. Like I don't have to get reattuned later. Like a lot of other things, like it'll always be there. Like it'll never go away. Um, so that's one of the things for, you know, people to know about and it's very beneficial. I can definitely attest to it. Um, from, you know, just the different things that it's brought me out of. So the last thing that I was going to talk about and bring up, and then if you guys have any questions, you can definitely ask, um, is the chakras. So I like to bring this poster just so that I can give you guys an idea about it. Um, this is how it goes. So with the chakras, they're considered um, in Sanskrit, it's, um, it's a spinning wheel, so it's like the spinning wheel of energy, and it starts at the bottom. So the bottom for everybody would be the root, which is the base of your spine. So it's either the base of your spine or the pelvic floor, so depending on, you know, if you're sitting, standing, whatever. Um, the root chakra, each one has a color, um, and there's reason for that, like, you know, if something's feeling off, you can wear certain <laughs> colors or work with certain colors and it'll help open up them chakra areas. Um, but the root chakra itself, this is where like your safety comes in. So like if you have fears or, you know, maybe you had trauma or, or abuse, verbal abuse, mental abuse or whatever, when you were younger in a relationship or whatever, all that would get stored down in there. So then in turn, you would start having different problems that can show physically, immensely, and emotionally on you. Um, because each chakra, they go with all different, um, all the different organs and systems in your body. So if your chakra's off, then most likely something in that health realm is gonna be off. And you can usually narrow down which chakras you need to work on by how you're feeling that day. Um, and there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can open up your chakras. I mean, people do yoga, people meditate, um, you know, people just manifest any of it. It's all, they don't have to call it Reiki, but it's all kind of the same thing. Um, the next one we have, it's the orange color. It's the sacral chakra. So the sacral chakra, this is where your creativity comes from. This is where, um, like any sexual energy or tendencies, all of that comes and stems from there. They kind of go hand in hand. So if you want a healthy relationship with, you know, healthy sex life technically, so that you can keep your creativity flowing. Because like I said, they go hand in hand. The next one, which is represented as yellow, it's the solar plexus. So the solar plexus, this one is where, you know, your self-esteem comes from at, you know, your emotions and things like that. It all comes out of this one. So if you're, you know, feeling low on yourself or whatever, most likely this is all, for like I said, they all go with different parts of your body. Uh, the sacral is right below your navel. The solar plexus is above the navel. It's uh, the belly button is the navel for any that don't know. The next one is the heart chakra. It's represented by green. Um, which is obviously in the center by your heart. Now this one, this is where all your love comes from. So, you know, if, if for some reason, you know, like I said, you were in a bad relationship, you don't have um, a good relationship with your mom or your dad or your kids or, you know, just in life, things like that, um, you know, that'll be off. So you'll see a lot of different things. You can even have, you know, heart issues and stuff when that's off. The next one you go up to would be the throat chakra. That one's by light blue. Um, so with that one, that one's all about being able to speak. So like for me, because I'm doing speaking today, I can wear my blue lace agate because this is to be able to help me get out what I'm trying to say. So because of that, that's why I wear the blue, I wear the blue pants. Um, because this is about being able to speak, tell your story. Because like I always tell people, anybody I come across, there's something that happened in your life that's gonna benefit somebody else. Like they've either been through it or a, a some type of situation close to it to where, you know, like you sharing your story would actually help them. So I always tell people, 
you know, this is where the throat chakra comes in. You got to be comfortable with yourself and not worry about what other people think and just tell what you, you know, what you need to tell. The next one's the third eye. This one is um, like an indigo color usually. This is your, you know, your spirituality. This is your, um, this is like your connection um, to meditate and same thing with like manifesting as well. It's your intuition, your foresight. Um, a lot of that is like, because anybody that meditates knows, like, if you do meditate, you can go to different places and stuff like that, see different things. That's, you know, your whole third eye. That's you opening that up. Um, and then the last one is the crown. That one can either be a violet color or a bright white light, depending on who you talk to. It's going to be one or the other. Um, but the crown, that one is your connection to your higher self, but the divine also. So... The more that you keep that open, the more that you'll be able to channel in, you know, any questions um, or, you know, any answers, uh, pretty much anything that you need to help you or your client uh, that you have at that time. So that's what I have for you guys. Um, do you have any questions for me? Sure. Good question. Okay, I, I'm starting to develop clear voice in the third eye, mm -hmm. so now I've got anxiety, so meditation is like hard, so what would you say about walking meditation, because I was starting to learn about was like walking meditation, what kind of advice would you give me to open up the third eye and walking meditation? Yeah, well, I mean, we're walking meditation, I always tell people, because a lot of people think that to meditate that you actually have to be sitting there yeah. in a quiet space yeah. and all that stuff, well that doesn't always work for me and a lot of other people, so I mean... You can definitely walk and meditate. The best thing I would say for that would be like, like at least where around where I live, we have like uh, Blueberry Hill, like trails that we can walk in. Okay. So in them type of instances, I would say, you know, when you walk, just try to be in nature somewhere. So either, okay. you know, and walking trails like that mm -hmm. to where you're grounded and you're, you know, getting into everything. Um, but you're not having a lot of other outside noise coming in. So that would be the main thing I would say when it comes to that. Because I know, even with me, I've been doing this for years now, but I'll sit down and meditate, and I get mad at myself because I can't even turn off my head. Yeah, but like, I can't even say for nothing. Like shaking it off the back of yeah. blood, anxiety, like, it's crazy yeah. stuff. Walking meditation. Yeah, it's, it's, it's <coughs> kind of crazy. Like, and that's the thing. Like, a lot of people, it takes a while, especially when you first start, because, you know, always use different things you know like fidget things to be able to kind of do you know kind of take over my mind but not fully take over my mind because you're playing with it you know without even having to think about it but it's helping keeping you calm as well so something like that would help as well besides just sitting you know I know most people listen to music too um, but like I said the main thing is just getting out in nature and being around whatever you can that's not um, a lot of noise because like I said a lot of us can't turn that crap off and yeah. it sucks but <laughs> yeah. it really yeah. is what yeah. it is it's true. Yeah. <laughs> so anybody else have any more questions if not then we be good. and I do have um, business cards up here so if you do uh, want to take them you can I am on all social media and everything um, I do bring Charlie Ranchers. I do have a thing for donations. That's just because I am going on a mission trip um, to Israel in May. So um, most of it's already paid for, but I'm still working on the flight. So I always bring that out. Um, so if anybody likes to donate, I also have a GoFundMe page as well on Facebook. So um, anything would help. Nothing's too small. And then I did bring out my pretty much a list of all of my services and prices. So you know, if anybody wanted to see it without going on to the websites. So other than that, that's all I got for you guys. Thank you. Thank
numbers are. And I'm like running back and forth. I'm calling, texting you. I'm calling you. I'm like, where are you? 